There's a lot you can learn from just going out in the woods, being still and watching. Wild Side Guide Ken Tucker grew up doing just that on the family farm in West Tennessee, where he first started photographing what he saw. Over the years, Ken came to understand that looking through the camera lens brought a different perspective and focus to the world around him. Today, he takes us to a simple stream where the ebb and flow of life takes on new meaning when you're looking through the glass. To the casual observer, it's just an ordinary stream. But this is living water. Breathing, speaking, working with inexplicable design, sculpting slabs of rock using tiny pebbles and the persistent rhythm of its flow bending light into pattern motion, painting works of art with casual indifference. For all the wonder of the stream itself, there is also the life that springs up around it. Wildflowers swaying with the breeze, each one a brilliant collaboration of color, molded into intricate form. tiny beetle sharing a waterfront view with a fellow winged wanderer. A crawling caterpillar busily working his way to a place only he can find. Dragonflies dancing to the beat of birth. While this living water is home to many wild things, the trees truly make life flourish. Leaves born in the soft light of spring gather energy from the sun all summer long. Then, as shortened days and cold air make them blush with color, they fall to earth and water, sharing the gift of their living with those below. There are a whole bunch of insects in here that are timing their life cycle so that they are ready in their feeding stage as larvae when those leaves fall in the stream. Some of them take the leaves right away and actually crunch them up and digest some of it. We call them shredders, crayfishes, big, big stoneflies, things like that. Food is what drives much of the activity here. The gift of life comes wrapped in the trappings of death. There are a myriad of tiny dramas unfolding every day. Take, for example, this fuzzy little worm, helplessly pulled downstream. A water strider, spying it from a distance, moves closer, then attacks. After a short struggle, the strider is rebuffed and retreats as the worm continues its fight for survival. Eventually, it makes its way to a rocky outcrop. The strider appears spent, resting on the water's edge as the worm slowly, persistently, inches up the bank to a less dangerous locale. The strider moves off to hunt again, effortlessly gliding across the water. I think the neat thing about these water striders is that they're walking on water, and that has to do with the surface tension, how they sit on top of the water, and they just look like they're skating. and. Uh, they go every direction. If you move towards them, they'll move away, and uh, they're hunting for food. Sometimes the hunt happens above the water. These aerial acrobats skillfully work high above the stream, constructing strong nets made of slender, silky strands in the hope of catching some flying insect. A praying mantis climbs high atop a flowery perch, then surveys the creek below. The hunt is on. Patience is the key for both the spiders and the praying mantis. But no matter how long you wait, and look, and wait, sometimes you just have to move on. Today the praying mantis leaves hungry, while one of the spiders sits on a stem and eats a well-earned meal. Like the praying mantis and the spider, we too must be patient. 
This simple stream is an unexplored universe, a treasure chest waiting to be opened. Stop and walk down to the water's edge and, and just sit there for a minute or two and just watch. Usually every time I'm out, I'll find something different or see something different that I haven't seen before. So it's just a matter of taking time to, to get out and sort of just relax, sit back, don't be in a hurry, and you'll be amazed at what you'll see. What we'll see is a part of ourselves looking back at us. Because no matter how small or insignificant a wild creature might seem, we're all interconnected. We're all part of the food web. And if one part of that food web or food chain is removed, then everything breaks down. And we forget that. We forget how connected we are to everything. It's a connection that must be nurtured and shared, passed down from generation to generation, so that this dream, small though it is, will always be filled with life. I'm Ken Tucker on Tennessee's Wild Side. <laughs> well, that just makes you want to go sit in the woods and take another look around you. Mother Nature is a great teacher, huh? Mm-hmm.